This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News, and we're here at 2017 Mobile World Congress with Crater Point. Gentlemen, why don't you tell me, introduce yourself, and talk a little bit about what you guys do. I'm Lindsay Notwell. I'm VP of Worldwide uh, Carrier Operations. And uh, I'm Ken Hosack, and I'm also a v Vice President at Cradle Point. So Cradle Point is in the business of supplying next generation software defined networking solutions for people, places, and things. Our target customers distributed in mobile enterprises. We've shipped about 1.5 million devices to over 15,000 customers. And we're very, very good at 4G LTE, which is why we're here at Mobile World Congress. Well, let's skip to the next technology. How does Cradle Point define 5G? Uh, we love 5G. We are so sick of 4G. <laughs> um, you know, we're, there's the classic technical definition of 5G, but then there's also the marketing definition. So we're following the standards very closely. Uh, we're spending a lot of time here with our friends at Qualcomm and Intel and Ericsson and Nokia and Sierra Wireless, uh, just really trying to understand when the reality of 5G is coming out. And pretty much it's on track for, you know, at the earliest late 19. 20 uh, or 21. The marketing hype is off the charts here around for, uh, 5G though. And there's a lot of uh, pre-release development using prototype FPGA and we're tracking that as well. Um, we establish a leadership in 4G and we need to do that again with 5G. And there's a lot of different technologies that we need to be good at to do that. Antennas is the biggest surprise you know, for a lot of people. Talk about some of the applications, uh, maybe Lindsay, you see around 5G. Yeah, the thing that 5G brings is ultra low latency, ultra high speed. So when you think about that sort of thing, you think about things like video and video conferencing, and that, that's all well and good, but we see applications like remote robotics or remote surgery or hazardous environment. Think about a firefighter now having the visuals of plans in their headset, that sorts of things, being able to deliver them potentially life-saving applications where they just wouldn't have had the same kind of capabilities before at the edge of the network. So how's, how's Crater Point going to bring 5G to an end user? Well, I'll give you an example. So uh, in our market, it's, it would be retail stores or branch offices or vehicles or machine to machine. But what we're seeing is that a lot of the applications that require this uh, high speed and low latency, uh, with 5G, what they're doing is they're taking the tower density that you see here in 4G and they're, they're compressing it. So instead of a half a mile or a mile apart, they're going to be you know hundreds of yards or less than that apart. And that density uh, to get all the backhaul they need to pair up with a lot of the wired providers. So we're starting to see some mergers between wireless and wired companies. Our customers, uh, they already appreciate the reliability of wireless. You, uh, we've never seen a squirrel chew through wireless, but what they want now is the bandwidth that you can, are afforded with 5G, because with the 5G network combined with all the wired, the use cases, you know, something like Netflix at home would be a drop in the bucket compared to what the you know, the enterprises want to use for their for their applications. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the 5G applications you see on the industrial side? You talked earlier about buses and like oil and gas, et cetera. Talk a little bit more detail about those applications. You all go for it. Yeah, go ahead. So, in terms of some of the applications, what we're seeing is some of the things that you have the ability to do. Um, in a wired environment today with, say, fiber optics, now you can extend that. So it's, it's, it starts to stretch the imagination when you have the ability to say, I want to do a particular function, but I want to do it out in the field, or I want to be able to do it in a remote location. Think about some of the applications that you might find uh, with taking your offices and moving it elsewhere. Think about logging operations, marine operations. There's so many industries and verticals and companies who've never had, they've had to sacrifice the kind of capabilities that they have at the edge of their network because they haven't had the connectivity. That all goes away now because you have the ability to deliver those capabilities anywhere. It, if think about extending your land to really anywhere in the world. That's what we do. Got it. Well, how do you think um, 5G will affect mobile edge computing? and the IOT. Well, I, I'll tell you one of my favorite quotes on IOT is the amount of data being generated at the edge by IOT devices is growing exponentially faster than the ability of the network to process it. 
And so we're positioning ourselves to be 5G ready. We ask our employees every day, what are you doing in this area to be ready for that? Edge processing, or uh, Cisco calls it fog computing. We're pushing uh, the compute resources out to the edge so that as you have all of that IoT data coming in, we can pre-process that and send the uh, the results in. So this gives us, you know, you asked about industrial, the ability, for example, in a refrigeration unit to send algorithms out in our router to the edge to predict when a compressor in an HVAC unit is going to fail. So these are the things that you can do when you have that extra bandwidth. You can bring the big data up to the cloud, analyze it, look for those signatures of that failure, and then push down that algorithm back to the edge. So talk a little bit about what would actually be in a 5G router. Yeah, so that's a, a great point. One of the things that we've been trying to do really throughout our history is to shoot to where the puck is going. Because if you think about when we launched our first, we were the world's first 4G router, um, that was something that at the time, back in 2011, 2012, was, was very unique and it was small form factor. That's one of the things that you know, got us into things like kiosks and buses and things like that. We just launched this particular device in January and one of the things that we had to do when thinking about that as it relates to 5G, this is available now, doesn't have a 5G radio in it quite yet, easy enough for us to be able to do that, but we had to think about engineering that device for end-to-end -end gigabit throughput. So you think about the processor in it, to think about the memory and the ability to move bits through, even when you're doing high uh, compute capabilities, things like deep packet inspection, because you have that ability on the device to do that. You want to do that pre-processing before it gets up to the network, because a lot of that then is inefficient if you're doing that. You want to do that, so you've got to have that capability on the device, and that's why we did that sort of engineering feat. Mm -hmm. So, how much compute do you envision being at the edge actually in your device? Yeah, it's, uh, we, we keep upgrading it every year. What we thought we needed uh, five years ago wasn't enough. And so we finally, uh, you know, basically our development team has been really pushing. So we spent a lot of time with the silicon providers, the compute providers. Uh, one of the things we're really pushing is NFV. The idea is our customers, we want to create an, uh, a virtualized environment at the edge so our customers can uh, essentially push down the applications that they want to run. Uh, what, you know, one additional thing I would say is, with regards to 5G is 5G is not going to just roll out everywhere at once. And so you're, you're going to see 4G with 5G start to layer out in certain areas. And one of the things CradlePoint is very good at is multi-WAN connectivity. Uh, in branch, people call it SD-WAN. Uh, in, uh, in vehicles and things, we do the same thing there with multiple WANs, um, being able to switch between different WANs. But a really important part of the success of rolling out and being early adopters on 5G is to have a seamless experience between 4G and 5G and use these software-defined WAN capabilities to be able to route applications and their traffic between those WANs uh, as the carriers roll out 5G and it becomes more pervasive. Well, one of the things we hear about enterprise and industrial clients is their concerns about network security. So how does um, CradlePoint address network security in an IoT world? Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is one of our favorite questions because we have such a strong solution for this. We, uh, we purchased uh, one of the pioneers in software-defined networking from Silicon Valley, Pertino, and we've integrated that into what we call CradlePoint NetCloud. And with that, we have software-defined networks that are overlay networks that, that use um, a, a client that goes directly into IoT devices. So a lot of people will start that encryption in the router IOT, the, the, the serious guys want to start it in the devices. And so we have the ability to use PKI encryption, you know, serious encryption, network authentication to essentially put those devices on the network, authenticate them, and then securely bring that data up to our private cloud where we can do additional security networking and route that to uh, applications in a, even in a private container at AWS. So that end-to-end -end security through NetCloud is a fundamental part of our solution. Well, and the important thing to think about is that there's not going to be a single connectivity source that solves all issues. You're going to have people have 5G connectivity, 4G connectivity, as Ken said, and then also Wi-Fi, satellite, you know, all of those types of things. And so you've got to be able to secure all of that, and that's one of the things that we do better than 
anybody is that ability to layer that overlay over top of any or all of those WAN sources at the same time. So you mentioned earlier about a lot of retailers not wanting other people on their networks. So why don't you talk about maybe how you help a retailer or any other end user uh, provide two different networks. Yeah, yeah. probably the best example, if you walk into any large format retailer, like a, a Walmart, for instance, you'll generally find multiple of our devices. You've heard the term, of course, BYOD. Nowadays, it's BYON, bring your own network. Because after many of the security breaches that are out, that, that have happened, uh, most of those particular big box uh, locations they don't want shared networks, they don't want anybody. So it's really an air-gapped network. And so a, a store within a store will be run by one of these kinds of devices because they can bring their own, it can move from location to location, they're not constrained by a wire, but it provides great security, great performance, and it's super easy. Even they could do some sort of a pop-up network. They could go into the parking lot, and they can go anywhere they want to because they bring their connectivity with them. And uh, just a couple of examples, one of our customers is uh, one of the, the largest banks in the nation, and their marketing team wanted to put digital signage in every branch. Why would you put digital signage on your secure financial network? So you take it off your financial network, put it on Cradle Point, use 4G as a separate parallel network, and now you can run your uh, digital signage. Well, now we have the opportunity with NetCloud to, they're also taking it out of their data center. So now they don't have the security appliance, they don't have that network uh, VPN concentrator. So we virtualize that and create this end-to-end -end solution that replicates what they had in the data center. They don't have that extra cost. And from their standpoint, it's just digital signage, so they don't need to overinvest. Uh, one of our other customers, a retail store, why would you put customer Wi-Fi on the same network as your point of sale devices? Why would you let someone drive into a parking lot to see if they could hack into your Wi-Fi and pivot over to your point of sale devices? And so it's really smart. Security through separation, just put it on a separate network, and that's been really driving our business. So we've heard software as a service. You're talking about platform and network as a service. Um, What's your go-to-market strategy for that, that offering? Well, we just stay true to our customer. So we look at our target customer, and this is a specific, uh, it's multiple verticals. We call it LACE, and, and it's uh, an acronym, Lean and Agile Connected Enterprise. And so it could be a retail store, it could be the post office, which is in a government but it's quasi-retail. A public bus is similar to a store. They have digital signage, credit card processing, passenger Wi-Fi. So, but we're targeting the ones that have lean IT. So if you're a heavy, if you're spending 10% of your revenue on IT, you probably have an army of engineers that can handle your network. But when you have 20,000 locations and a team of five people to keep that running, that's pretty lean. That's where you need cloud-based management, et cetera. So how do we target those customers? Uh, we go through distribution channels. We pick partners. Each of those verticals has uh, unique partners that, uh, you know, for example, deploying on every bus in New York City, that's one partner. Deploying in all the coffee shops is a different partner. Some retailers use managed service providers. So we let the customers choose who they would like to deploy their network and in some cases operate their network and then we support them. Great. Lindsay, any closing comments? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's an exciting industry. It's a really great time in the industry. 5G will provide a lot of catalysts for new applications and, and new opportunities. We just are really uh, jazzed about the opportunity in this business to grow further, but it's all about security and portability and reliability, and we're excited because that's what we do so well. Final question, there's been a lot of talk about 5G, so when do you think 5G will be here? <laughs> yeah, well, as Ken said earlier, the question is, is this the marketing 5G or is this the technical 5G? I think you're going to see technical. We, we see trials out there now. We've seen in the U.S. announcements from a couple of the major carriers about actually now involving end users with those trials. And a lot of that is still in the fixed world because we don't have the standards for mobility and handoff and those types of things. But I think you'll see the beginnings of it uh, this coming year. I think you'll see some, uh, some uh, commercialization early next year, and then once we get the standards done for mobility and the rest, the rest will snowball from there. Ken Lindsay, thanks for your time. Thank you. This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News, signing off for the most exciting company here at Mobile World Congress, Greater Point. Thank you. Thank you.